Welcome to the Inside Nutley Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Greco, and I'm pleased to be joined by Commissioner Alphonse Petraco, Director, Department of Public Safety. Welcome, Commissioner. Thank you, Tom. Last time we spoke on Inside Nutley, we discussed your background and your career as a lifelong Nutley resident and business owner, your life, and your accomplishments. For this month's podcast, I'd like to focus more on the Public Safety Department, as well as topics that concern our residents. Sound good? Sounds good. Let's recap a little. After growing up in Nutley and graduating from Nutley High, you eventually opened Pachaco and Sons Deli and then were elected to the Board of Commissioners in 2008, correct? Yes. And you were all, were you, you've always been the Director of Public Safety? I have from day one. What made you choose that specific department? Actually, when um, I ran, Public Safety was open. It was Carmen Recco didn't get in that year. So that was the vacancy and they, we decided as a Board of Commissioners that I would take over here. Was that your number one choice? I have to be honest with you, it, it kind of was. It is, it is the biggest department in Nutley, as you know. Um, it was a lot of hard work. I do have cops and firemen in my family, so I knew a little bit about it, but not that much about it. And it was a, it was a lot of work, a lot of um, nights here, spending 20 hours a day here in the beginning to really learn what my job and role is. How long did it take to make you feel comfortable in the position? I would say six months to a year. Public safety is made up of several departments. Let's start with the fire department. I know it seems pretty obvious, but I'm sure there's more to being a firefighter than just putting out fires. Can you explain the duties of the fire department? Sure. Well, as we as it's been the last couple of years already, we have taken over the ambulance squad. So we do medical calls as well, and that has been really um, well received by the fire department, and they're doing an excellent job. Our response time is pretty much two minutes anywhere in the township of Nutley. We also have fire prevention in here, which prevents fires. Um, we have um, a lot of inspections that we do to prevent fires. So it's really become, you know, a much, much busier area of public safety than ever in the past where, you know, we're not just going on fire calls where even, you know, if our ambulance is tied up with firemen, we'll respond with the fire truck if we have to, to anything to help out a resident, we do. How has that changed since when you started? Well, when I started here in 2008, the, the um, ambulance squad was up the street, as we all know, and it was kind of a private entity, also, although it fell under public safety. Um, the volunteers fell off. It was a lot of per diems, you know, through the years, um, you know, bring up some of my old names, Skip Gould, Jim Paulson, Timmy Keating, a lot of the old timers did a great job. And as they, you know, moved on, you know, it became challenging to fill all those hours up there. How many firemen are in the department? Right now we have about 42. Um, again, they've taken on the role of the ambulance, so we need, we actually need to hire a couple more, you know, to, to provide that service as well. Um, you know, and there's a lot of moving parts. We also have hazmat, you know, in, in our fire department, which we count, we cover all of Essex County. So if there's any oil spills, toxins, anything like that, we um, we cover the whole county and, you know, there's training involved, how to clean up. If something leaks into one of our brooks here, um, the advantage of having hazmat in our house and in our town is that our response time is like that and we could prevent a lot of, of toxins or, or, you know, hazardous materials flowing down our streams or in the streets or wherever they are. So. It's, it's, it's worked out well the, the last 16 years I've been here. The fire department in Nutley has had such a great tradition. Um, there are many legendary names that have come through these walls. What's your, what are your thoughts on that? You know, growing up as a kid here, you know, and when I walked into public safety, I was one of the youngest people here. All of a sudden, you know, the names are changing, the faces are changing. I became one of the oldest people here. Fortunately, unfortunately, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's the old cliche to, you know, that, you know, we're, we're you know, it, I know it's expensive public safety and sometimes people don't want to pay a cop or a fireman, but when you need them, then you'll give anything to have them there. And, you know, it's funny because when I first started here, you know, a, a woman came into my store and was like, oh, you know, we, we, do we really need a paid fire department? And, you know, I'm like, listen, you know, they respond anywhere in the town and two minutes if you're all volunteers you know the response time is less because they got to leave work so forth and so on you know go to the fire station our guys leave right from here and you know the lady was a little hard on me but you know as 
God works in mysterious ways. She did have a fire at her house a couple of years later, and she came into my store and she wanted to buy a tray of sandwiches. And I said, where would you like to send them? And she smirked and she said, I want to send them to the Nutley Fire Department. I said, weren't you the lady? And she laughed and she says, yes, I was. But you know what? Now that I've been through a fire and, you know, her daughter was trapped on the second floor and the fireman went up there and got her, you know, again, you know, she, she, she was committed to saying, look, I was wrong and it's great to have them there just in case we need them. What are some of the most significant things you've learned about the department that you didn't know before becoming a commissioner? So I've learned that until you sit in these seats and you're actually inside, it's easy to be a critic from a safe distance. When I first came here and even through these challenging times that we're having now, what, you know, these car break-ins, people are going into houses, you know, grabbing the fobs and things of that, like quality of life. Thank God we don't have homicides here and serious offenses, but we do have these petty crimes. You, you really don't know all the intricate workings of public safety. It's a very, very, very busy department. I've sat here a lot through the midnight shift, the four to 12 shifts. You would not believe what is dragged through here and what these guys are working on. You know, um, Nutley's a great town, but we're not, we don't have a wall around it and we are not immune to crimes and to drugs and all that stuff. And I have to tell you, you know, with the help of our neighborhood watch program, and that's been a big success for us, you know, we're getting a lot of leads and, you know, we're preventing a lot of things here. So, you know, sometimes you see a cop, you know, driving around or park somewhere and you're like, what are these guys doing? You know, you, you can't put a gauge on what they're preventing from just being out there. Tell me about the emergency medical services department. Well, the emergency medical department is, is our, our ambulance squad now. You know, um, we always have, you know, at least one ambulance. We try to run two ambulances at a time. Our guys, our, well, our fire department is trained in EMTs. So again, if our ambulance is tied up, you know, our fire trucks go out and they could help, um, you know, the people as well. But obviously we can't transport people in a fire truck, but we have mutual agreement arrangements with other towns and other, you know, municipalities that we help each other out. You know, I'm, I'm very proud to say that, you know, since, you know, I mean, the volunteer squad up the street was stellar, you know, and it was a really easy, um, difficult transition down here, but, you know, under the direction of our chief, you know, our, my assistant, it really was a smooth trans transition. And uh, I'm very proud to say that we are on top of it. We do not balance bill. It's not a cost to the taxpayers. We don't, whatever the insurance covers, that's what we take. We don't send you out a separate bill. If you do get a separate bill, please contact my office because you should not get that. We touched on this briefly before, but can you explain a little bit more about the Hazardous Materials Emergency Response Hazmat Unit in Nutley? So our, all our firemen are hazmat certified as well. And if there's a spill of any, you know, um, you know, chemical of any sort throughout the whole county of Essex, we do respond. Um, we are funded partly by the county with that as well. And again, it's great to have these guys in-house, you know, during, you know, 9-11. Obviously, there was a lot of threats. And, you know, if there was anything going on in Nutley, we're right here to respond to those calls. Anything in our brooks, waterways, um, you know, a car accident even, antifreeze, you know, we always try not to let it lead to our waterways and, you know, affect our, our um, streams and rivers around our area. So it's a it's another layer of what the fire department does. Again, a lot has changed in the fire department since, you know, the 60s and 70s and even 80s. You know, we're not just sitting here waiting for a fire. I mean, these guys are constantly either on a hazmat call, medical call, doing fire prevention, inspections, you know, to prevent fires and things like that. Let's switch over to the police department. If another town's mayor asked you to describe the Nutley Police Department, how would you do it? I would say that we have one of the best police departments in the state and maybe even the country. I have a bunch of guys that really care. A lot of them do live here. Um, you know, when you go up in the ranks too, you know, you, I say it all the time, you can't, you can't teach somebody how to care. And I'm very proud of the, the people that we have here. They're great with our kids. We have school programs that cops go into all the time. We work with the, the youth of Nutley. All of a sudden, the way the world is, you know, cops are villainized, 
you know, and I'm hoping that turns around. Now our cops wear body cameras, so it's not the job it was in yesteryear either. They really have a tough job to do. There's a lot of um, protocols, policies in place, you know, and the cops really have a tough job. You know, a lot of people call me up, you know, why aren't the cops, you know, chasing a car that's stolen? Why aren't the cops, you know, taking care of, you know, the quads that are, you know, going through our town, sometimes 300 at a time we had on Washington Avenue. The attorney general guidelines are so strict now of that, you know, reasons why you can't chase. So there's a whole criteria that they have to meet in order to be able to chase that vehicle. And it's, it's lengthy and I think it needs to be changed some of it. You know, sometimes we get hits on stolen cars and, you know, depending on the weather conditions, you know, people in the area, the times of day, you know, it, 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 they do not allow them to chase even stolen cars. Sometimes they have to pull away from them, if you can imagine that. So a cop's job is a, a very difficult. I'm proud of our cops. You know, there's never an issue in Nutley. Um, I'm actually hoping to get a few more on, you know, to, to combat what these, you know, petty crimes have been. You know, we're holding guys over, changing shifts because, you know, we are just not going to tolerate that in our town. What are some of the biggest challenges the police face? Well, the biggest challenges challenges in every town with the cops are, you know, the attorney guidelines now. You know, wearing body cameras, which most of the time, I have to tell you, protects the cops because a lot of people accuse them for doing not doing their job, doing the wrong thing. But, you know, the body cameras have changed the world. The bail reform has changed the world that, you know, for these petty crimes, you know, it's a lot of juveniles committing them. They don't go to jail. I employed the East Orange mayor. I did an interview with one of the news stations and he was even saying that it's time to make changes to the bail reform because when there's no penalty for the crime, you know, and a lot of times it's juveniles, they come back, you know, they get locked up and before that cops are off duty, they're already back down the street doing the same thing. So, I mean, I think that the times have changed, you know, I'm hoping that America changes and you know, shakes a cop's hand because, you know, they really have a, a really, really tough job. And the problem with policing, in my opinion today, is the only thing that you see on the news today is, you know, 1%, I think, is of cops are, you know, have done the wrong thing, we'll say. So that means 99% of them are doing the right thing. But you never see on Channel 7 or Channel 2 or whatever news um, station you watch, you know, the cop crossing the old lady or the cop putting his arm around the kid. For whatever reason, that does not get televised. So, you know, again, I ask all my Notley residents, you know, you see a cop, they're very approachable. A lot, they're all a lot younger now. Um, and they're, you know, they, they have to be from Notley to get the job. So you probably know them. Go up to them, introduce yourself, shake their hand, you know, be part of something that's really good. You know, I saw that, that interview that you did with, uh, I don't know if it was CBS, or NBC, whoever it was, and uh, it was it was kind of funny to see uh, you. Uh, I believe there was a, a a policeman from another town, an East Orange mayor, talking about how bail reform is is not working, and it needs to be changed. Um, but yet, then they had the lobbying groups and the politicians saying, "Oh, the data, the data says it's working. The data says it's working." Um, how? I mean, it's just crazy that it seems like the people that are on the ground understand and see that it, it really isn't working, yet everybody else, whether it be a politician or a lobbying group who aren't on the ground, are just clueless about it. And they're just saying, look at the data, look at the data. That must drive you crazy. Tom, it is the most frustrating thing for the last 16 years that I have to had to deal with sitting in the seat. When you have inner city mayors saying that the bail reform is not working, you think these legislators would, you know, change their mind or at least address it. To me, numbers could be, you know, portrayed any way they want to work it. I am not buying that the data covers it. I know the last podcast we did, there was even some comments of the data, the data, the data. I don't need data, okay? And I look at the data. I look at my town and I see what's going in on, in here, on here. I look in other towns. I, see, I talk to many chiefs. I talk to many mayors. They all say the same thing. So until it comes to these politicians or legislators' neighborhoods and it's their house that they're walking into in the middle of the night with their two kids sleeping, then maybe they'll think about changing it. But it, in my opinion, it's a failure. 
and it needs to be changed. We need to have law and order in this world. It's not fair to the hardworking people that we have that you have to worry about. If you don't lock your door, somebody's going to come into your house at night. It's truly become a bizarre world when the divide between perception and reality is so vast that we can't even come to an agreement whether I, I don't know whether it's political or not but we can't come into uh, we can't come to an agreement when we see these things with our very own eyes it's 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 unimaginable to me it really really is and you know what and I'm all for youth in America and you know what we need to instead of having these kids on the street we need somebody to put their arm around them and show them you know the right way of the world and you know there's a lot of opportunity for all our kids and all kids all across america and i want the best for them i don't know how they get entangled with these bad people and i believe that there are adults that are behind it sending these kids to neighborhood and i have to be honest with you i hope there's a special place in hell for them because when you take advantage of a kid like that you know you're, you're just a horrible person and, and and i hope they see this interview Along those lines, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the Neighborhood Watch? Our Neighborhood Watch program, you know, started back in the 70s, you know, and because of this tick up and this rash of, of you know, kind of uh, this rash of crimes that we're having, you know, we decided to bring it back. Tom, it's been overwhelming. We have over 170 residents already signed up for it, which is way more than I could have ever imagined. And they're out there and they're looking and they are calling our police department and you know good things partnering with our residents and more eyes on the streets and at night if you hear something call you know it's it's been really a, a, um a tribute to notley that so many people are getting in, involved in this and I, I can't applaud you enough for being part of it and it has ticked down all of a sudden it's it's funny how these 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 burglaries or car thefts are it's like, you know, you'll have three in a night and then you won't have three, you know, any for three weeks. So it's like a bad rash. They do keep coming back, but with the help of our residents and like I said, our overwhelming response with this neighborhood watch is incredible. It's really, it says what Nutley's all about. One big family. And with the more eyes out there, you know, we could deter this. The more the police keep on them, though they will go somewhere else and they have been going somewhere else. So I keep my fingers crossed and I want to thank all the residents and please, if you watch this, please get involved. One of the biggest things I've heard sitting in the seat for the last 16 years is after the crime. You know, I saw somebody outside and they didn't look right and I didn't recognize them, but I didn't want to bother the police. Please, you're not bothering us. If you see something, say something. You could be preventing something in your neighborhood from happening. Nutley has always been considered one of the safest towns in not only the state, but in the country. With all of today's problems, whether it be bail reform or rising crime or drugs, how do you maintain that legacy? Nutley is still one of the safest towns in New Jersey and in, in the country. Our crimes are down. You know, our violent crimes, we hardly have any ever, thank God. You know, it's this, you know, we maintain it by having people who care. And like I said, our police department and our police, they care. You know, it starts at the top with our chief, our deputy chief, our captains. They're on it, you know, and I'm here a lot to make sure they're on it. You know, I, I love the town and I want Nutley to be safe. We have beautiful parks. We have Franklin Avenue. It's nice when the weather gets nice to be able to walk around. And you know what? So far, that has not been interrupted, you know, and I'm committed to making sure that that stays that way. You know, and again, with the bail reform and these petty crimes, you know, we want to get our hands around that, too. Because we don't want any crime in that way. Well, you say it starts at the top, but you're the top. So actually, it starts with you. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Tom. And you know, when I got elected in 2008, and you know, pretty much everybody knows I own a deli in town, and I wasn't ever involved in this. And Carmen Arecchio was an icon in that league, you know, and he ruled with an iron fist down here. And I have to tell you, you know, it's because of things that Carmen Arecchio did down here you know, to put in place. And, you know, people sometimes compare me to Carmen, say that I'm a lot like him. And, you know, Carmen was a dear friend of mine, God rest his soul. And I have to tell you, you know, it's one of the biggest compliments I could get. And he lives on because I am committed, like he was committed, to make sure that this town stays, stays safe, that we love here, because we all live here.
Your department oversees dozens of programs which I think many residents aren't aware of. Do you mind if we touch on some of them? Let's start with the HOPE program. Well, that one, God rest my mom's soul, you know, I, I say it all the time, drugs don't discriminate from any family, including mine. You know, so unfortunately, as parents, there is no blueprint, right? We, you know, I've raised three boys. It's, you know, you, you kind of go and learn as you go through it. So there's no blueprint. So when I first started here, I was really committed to the, to the doing something about the drugs here. And, and, you know, you can only educate kids so much because they're kids. And I would go to Nutley High School Auditorium and who's on their phone, who's filing their nails because they're young and they don't get it, right? But the parents do. So I decided to put this program together, Hope, helping our parents endure. And what that is, is that it's an education to our parents. What signs is little Johnny coming home with that you should be very concerned about? And is it, you know, is it the rolling papers that are, he's telling you that are for his eyeglasses? Mm -hmm. You know, it's signs that you could, could um, pick up on. And it's been really a great program. It's been around for probably be, probably as long as I've been around here. You know, for the last 16 years, we have big carnivals. We talk to the kids. You know, when my kids were growing up, I said this at one of the um, carnivals at the high school that we had a few years ago. When my kids were young, you know, growing up, because unfortunately, like I said, it's in every family. I used to make them come home in front of their friends, shine a flashlight in their eyes, smell their breath. Their friends are looking at me, and I'm like, if you're in my house, I have to do it to you, too. And then my kids are like, oh, my father's crazy. Just do it. Get it over with. Well, one time my middle son came home and he just left the house and he was home like a half hour later. And I said, Vincent, what are you doing home? And he said, oh, dad, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into it. I said, Vincent, I'm going to ask you nice one more time. What are you doing home? And he says, well, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Police Commissioner, if you're not going to go tell all my friends and rat on them, I'll tell you. I go, Vincent, what's up? He goes, well, my friends got some beer. They were drinking in the park. I looked at them. They looked at me. They're like, yeah, we know your father's crazy. You better get out of here. So it's an intervention and it works. So please be on top of your kids. I've always said if we could save one kid's life, the programs, my life would be worth it. What about the domestic violence intervention team? Our domestic intervention does a great job. You know, domestic violence is an epidemic in every town, unfortunately, you know, all through America. Um, you know, I, I, I say to all my friends, you know, myself, anybody that I'm in touch with, you know, if you're fighting with your loved one, spouse, girlfriend, all that stuff, it's much easier to walk away. You know, we try to educate people on, you know, the domestic violence, how there's no discretion from the cops. If somebody has a mark on them, somebody's going to jail. So please, you know, if you want any more information, you could call my office. What about the police SLEO program? SLEOs are usually retired police officers that we hire. They're allowed to work part-time to augment our police department. It's very helpful. They help us with traffic a lot of times. We have them in the court system. So rather than pay a full-time cop, you know, this is a way to save a little money. Let's talk about fire prevention night. Yes, fire prevention is a great night in Nutley. Um, we have all our firemen here, our ambulance squad, the police department even um, contributes to that. And what it is, is this, it's all tips of, you know, what you should do in a fire. We, the biggest attraction we have is the kids squirting the hose usually, but one of the um, attractions is that they actually start a fire inside a um, enclosure and they teach the kids, not inside, of course, how to, you know, drop, roll, how to get out, you know, things like that, you know, and it's, um, it's all fire, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors, and it's, a, it's really a good education piece. And it's a lot of fun, too. The kids seem to really enjoy it. What about the PALS program? Yes, that's our program that we, um, we, we, we go through with the Board of Education. We're in all the schools. We have cops that go in there. Um, it kind of ties in with our junior police department, too. And it's just to get the kids to know, you know, know some of the police officers. You know, actually, uh, Lieutenant Padilla does an excellent job with it. You know, it's thumbs up, thumbs down. Every time they, I see Mike walk through the schools, kids are giving him a thumbs up. It's, um, it's a way to just get the kids to know the cops. Um, Mike, again, is excellent at educating the cops. He also coaches here, so he gets them later on through their um, school career. 
And it's just, you know, it's to bring us together with the police officers. And that leads into the Junior Police Academy. Every year I go to the Junior Police Academy, that's usually in Spring Garden School. The numbers have grown so much. I, I'm so proud of the enrollment we have. And again, it's about mentorship. You know, it's even, you know, teaching kids discipline, you know, even getting them in shape. They take bags, they, you know, punch, you know, the pads, all that kind of thing. And they're, you know, grammar school kids. And we have some high school kids that help us out with it. And it's, you know, you, you walk through there, you have the parents there, at, you know, they get a little certificate when they graduate. It's like a junior police academy is it, what it is. And you know what, it, it, it turns kids vision into looking at cops differently, of course. And maybe someday they'll even want to become a police officer. But one of my happiest times in the 16 years is handing out those diplomas to those smiling faces. I attended my first one this year, or I should say last year, and it really is an amazing event. Um, it, it's amazing the cooperation you get, especially these days. It, it really, it, it's really overwhelming, and it, it's, again, I can't believe how many kids since I started to now that sign up. And it's, you know, they're from all of our grammar schools here. The parents are, you know, very thrilled that we have it. You know, we try not to ever turn a kid away. We always make room, but it's it's really something for the kids to really get to, again, get to know the police, the teachers, them respect, honesty, integrity. It's really, you know, it's it sets that foundation from somebody other than their parents, of course. What about Dr. Seuss Day? Tom, I have to tell you, Dr. Seuss Day is one of my favorite days of the year, especially now since they are Zooming to all the schools. So having the deli, growing up on the other side of town, coaching through the years, you know, I met a lot of these youngsters and it's like, I feel like a rock star when they put me on that screen. The kids are waving to me, screaming at me. I get to read to them. And then at the end of the uh, Dr. Zeus book, I'm able to field questions. And some of the questions are from outer space, of course. It's like, what's my dog's name? What do I like to eat? But I have to tell you, I mean, to me, you know, we're put on this earth to take care of our kids and pay it forward and make sure that they grow up in the same kind of town we have. And it's just a, a pleasure to see all those smiling faces. I'm able to do all, all of the schools at one time, which is great. Um, we usually do it at 1030 during that week. And again, the kids are ecstatic and, and so am I. What exactly is a bike rodeo? So we have our bike rodeo here. We set up cones right on our public safety in the front here. We call it the front ramp. Um, all the cops get involved. We teach the kids, if they don't know how to ride a bike, how to ride a bike. We put cones out we, and we teach them all about the safety of helmets. We hand, we hand out helmets. I believe we even hand out hot dogs that day. And again, it's just another way to interact with Nutley's youth, meet the parents, <clears throat> which is great too. And it's, you know, we pray for sunshine that day. And I have to tell you, like the last few years, that program has even grown in. I would urge all the parents to please, you know, um, there are a lot of accidents with these bikes, kids falling off them, you know, helmets, even though your, your son or daughter is young, it saves life. So please, if you're going to ride your bike or your kids are going to ride their bike, please, you know, wear the safety. You've added quite a few programs for, uh, for kids and parents to come down. Uh, let's talk about a couple of those. Let's start with Trunk or Treat. Trunk or Treat is another great one. It's Halloween. The numbers come out like crazy. We decorate our police cars. Um, we are even lucky enough to have um, Brown's Funeral Home and even Beyond These has um, helped us out with, you know, the, you know, we, with the um, hearse, with, you know, a skeleton in the coffin. We decorate all the cars, the ambulance squad, our fire department, our cops are all here. And again, you know, they line up up Chestnut Street to get here. And the thing with that is it's, it's really a safe place to come trick-or-treating, right? You don't have to worry about the candy, anything like that, because it's been given out to our public safety department. We get a lot of mostly young kids that come here, which is fantastic. We have a DJ, and every year it's just growing and growing. And, and, and I'm confident that it will continue to grow. And another way to meet your fire department, meet myself, our police chiefs, our police, you know, patrolmen, and everybody above. I could be wrong, but I could have sworn I saw a Ghostbusters car out there last year. You did see a Ghostbusters car. There's some really good, the decorations are fabulous, I have to tell you. I mean, and they get better every year. So it's, it's something to definitely stop through.
so you know who to call. Ghostbusters. <laughs> then, of course, you have the Easter Bunny and the Santa Claus meet and greet every year, correct? The Easter Bunny's great. We're gonna we're we're starting to um, get our fire department, police department involved in that, where you could take a picture on the fire truck with you know the youngsters or police car. Um, I have to give my Sam Carella, my assistant, a lot of credit. The our Christmas show this year, we took the fire trucks out of the bays downstairs. The decorations, Santa Claus, the pictures, you know, the hot chocolate. It was just. So tastefully done, and I have to tell you, I can't take credit for that one, Tom. That was Sam's idea, and it went over fantastic. We had a line out the door, and being it's indoors, well, even though we have the bay doors open, we caught a good night, and it was it wasn't so cold inside, and the kids just seemed to to love it. And it was and it was great because again, everybody that works in public safety, another opportunity to meet who's protecting us. It's another tradition that you've maintained is Santa going around town on a fire truck, right? Yes, actually, that, that's been through the volunteers. I have to give them credit for that. And they are still up and going, and it's great. You know, you, when you hear the sirens, the kids come running out once in a while. I will go with them. Um, and it, it, it's just a fantastic um, thing. To, to, you know, it's the holiday season. It's what makes Nutley special. Speaking of that, tell me what you think of when you look at this picture I just texted you. You know what? Uh, you, could we put this on camera? That brings back a lot, a lot of fun memories. Tom, growing up in this town, you know, and what Nutley's all about. And if we could just pass that forward to future generations, I know Nutley will always be a special place because pictures speak a thousand words, and that's a, a great shot. And I can remember being a little kid because I grew up on Park Avenue and the firemen putting us up on the fire truck and taking a picture and so willing to do it. Of course, for you, that was probably in the 60s. For me, it was the 80s. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they were still great guys. And, you know, a it, lot of them have passed on, but God rest their souls. But don't you think those are the kinds of traditions that make Nutley great? And the kinds of things that, you know, people like you in your position allow to keep going on even 60 years later or 30 years later for you? You know what? That's a big compliment from you. You know, I truly do love the township of Nutley. I'm born and raised here. I don't plan on ever going anywhere to retire. Nutley is my home, and, you know, we have a nice little green bowl, and I, if I could, you know, pay it forward and keep it that way, I will always work hard to make sure that our kids have the same opportunities that we had growing up here. I think that's one of the coolest things about Nutley is that these kinds of events are things that carry on for decades. Um, you know, 60 years from now, the, the kids that have been at the recent meet and greets with whether it's Easter Bunny or Santa, I'm sure they'll be showing these kinds of pictures to their kids and their grandkids. And that's, uh, you know, that's something we all can be proud of. I hope so. I really hope that's 60, 60 years from now. I mean, with the technology and everything in the world changing. But you know what? I have to say when I was the mayor from 2012 to 2016, I'd be down in South Jersey, Trenton, all over the state. And I was amazed of all the people that would come up to me and say, you know what, you're, you're from Nutley? Yes, I am. You, really, you guys really have a nice town there. And to me, that's the biggest compliment you could get. All of you commissioners know better than anyone uh, that people love to complain on social media. So I'm gonna bring up a couple subject matters that seem to come up more often than not. Let's start with overnight parking. What are your thoughts? Wow. You know, there's two things that I get the biggest complaints about. It's either they're for it or against it. It's overnight parking or speeding. You know, so let's talk about speeding first, if you don't mind. So I get a lot of complaints about speeding in neighborhoods. So I want to warn you. To, usually when we set up radar on these streets that people are complaining about, guess who's the people that are speeding? People in the neighborhood that live on the street. So I urge you know, everyone to please slow down. There's a million kids in Notley too, the speed limit is 25 miles around town. God forbid if you hit a kid, you gotta live with that the rest of your life. So that's one of the biggest complaints that I, I feel I, I, I receive here. Um, the overnight parking, I could say to you straight out, as long as I sit in this seat, I will never change it. The full board, I don't wanna speak for them. They agree with me. That's what differentiates Nutley from everybody else. 
the snowstorms come. We, you know, DPW does a good job of from plowing curb to curb. It does prevent a lot of crime. Cops go down the street, they see a strange car parked there, they run the plate, they see who's up, if the address is there, things like that. I know that it's difficult. I raised three boys, you know, the driveways are crowded. Please reach out to your neighbors. We don't do it because we want to issue you tickets. We do it because it really enhances our police to do their job, again, with the snow again. You know, you go through some of our neighboring towns after a snowstorm, it's like, a, you know, the atom bomb went off. You know, again, you know, the crime rate is very low in Nutley. We want to keep it that way. I do feel for the people that have trouble. I mean, I think Commissioner Tucci has opened up some of the municipal lots that you could apply for. And, you know, or if you have an elderly neighbor where her kids are grown, maybe you can make arrangements with that. I think it's what differentiates ourselves. Do we want to be like everybody else or do we want to be Nutley? You know, and I think that it helps our emergency vehicles that night. If it's an ambulance, if it's a fire truck getting through the streets, they're, they can go fast, you know, quicker, get to the scene quicker and things like that. So traffic. Traffic. So let's talk about the traffic in Nutley a little bit. Obviously from, again, when we were kids, Tom, the traffic has, you know, definitely developed at a higher volume here. It's, it's amazing to me that people don't stop for pedestrians in our town. You know, we, if I put cops out there, you know, by the pedestrian crosswalk, everybody stops. The minute that I send the cop away, everybody keeps going. You know, that's just courtesy. And, you know, I, I, I urge you to be courteous to the people. You know, pedestrians are being hit by cars throughout our state more than ever. You know, the traffic has increased everywhere. So, I mean, get up five minutes earlier, you know, try to take your time, you know, because the streets are getting a little busier now. And, you know, there are a lot of kids, schools opened, things like that. So, you know, plan a little more time in your day this way, you know, everybody stays safe. When you look to the future, how do you see Nutley moving forward? As I look to the future, I see Nutley still blossoming. I see it, you know, really doing well in the future. I see that our, you know, education will be strong here. Our family spirit is strong. I think Nutley's been the same since I'm a kid, and I think in the future it'll blossom. We do have that on three project going on. I think it's going to create a lot more jobs. I think it's going to be great for our community, our, our business district, Franklin Avenue, all the, you know, Washington Avenue, even Chestnut Street. You know, the restaurants are really coming back. COVID did a job on everybody, including, you know, the businesses. But I really see that with smart developing, with smart development, you know, not we really thriving into the future, you know, the next generation that comes, the generation after that, you know, we have to make sure that we have the safeguards in place for them and we have the technology here and really give them what they want and they're looking for to keep Nutley growing and keep it moving forward. What do you like most about being a commissioner? I just, I have to tell you, I, I, I feel honored and privileged to have this seat. I feel like it's an honor and privilege to be with the kids, you know, help people, be there when somebody's really in need, with especially public safety, you know, if it's a cop matter or if it's with the fire ambulance. It's just a good feeling to, to, to be able to help people. You know, my mom, God rest her soul, she taught us, my brothers and I, from when we were young, it doesn't cost any money to be kind. And, you know, as long as I'm sitting in the seat, I'll make sure that we are being kind to our Nutley residents. And of course you served as mayor from 2012 to 2016. What did you enjoy most about that experience? Well, that's an easy question, Tom. You know, my mom passed away five years ago and I'm a simple person. I'm a simple guy that grew up on Park Avenue in a simple family, in a very modest family. And for my mom to be alive, to see her son become the mayor, which I never even thought would happen, obviously. You know, it's just a tribute to my parents, my brothers, my family, our neighborhood, you know, and to all of Nutley, you know. I tell the kids when I see them in the schools, this and that, you know, I went to Washington school. I was the chubby fat kid all through grammar school. Then thank God I had a growth spurt in um, seventh and eighth grade and I kind of strained out. I was actually shy in high school too. I wasn't like all that talking and flash. 
and all that stuff. So I say to everybody, you know, set your goals up here. Nutley's a, a wonderful place to serve. It was truly an honor and privilege to be the mayor, to be a sitting commissioner all these years, you know, and I hope that people respect me like I respect them and that, you know, I've done an okay job for them. What are Al Pacharco's most favorite things about Nutley? My favorite things about Nutley is easy. It's the kids, it's the families, it's the history here, it's the traditions here, and it's the people. As we said at the start of the podcast, you've been a commissioner for 16 years. That's 16 years of volunteer 20 to 30 hour work weeks, 16 years of time away from your family and your business. So I have to ask you, Commissioner, why do you do it? I do it because I love the town and I don't want to see it change. Um, I have to tell you, I have to correct you, Tom. It's, it's much more than 20 or 30 hours some weeks, you know, but I never considered this a job, to be honest with you. You know, I do consider it a privilege and I really love what I do. I, I, I wouldn't want to be in any other department. I, I, I love this. Like I said, I follow Carmen Arecchio. Someday when I'm not here, if people remember me like they remember Carmen, it would be an honor. Um, you know, I just I just love what I do here. It's, it's not a job to me. Okay, I wanted to save this question for the end because I think it, it may be the most important question that I've ever asked you on, on any of our podcasts. And uh, that is, is, how do you explain your spotty record as a recreation basketball coach? <laughs> See, Tom has to bring this up every podcast because he still has sour grapes about me beating him in championship games when our kids were young. But I have to tell you, I know Tommy Greco and his family a long, long time. And I know someday when God calls upon us, even in heaven, he's going to remember that we beat him. But it was it, it was uh, not a spotty record, Tom. I remember really kicking your butt. <laughs> <laughs> thank you commissioner it's been a pleasure pleasure is all mine thank you so much